Hey guys, it's Archon. Welcome to Inferno Friday. This is probably going to upset some people. Recently, we've been getting a lot of exciting announcements about Diablo 3, Loot 2.0, Paragon 2.0, Reaper of Souls announcement, Diablo 3 Auction House is being removed, at least most people are excited about that one, and we got all of these exciting announcements shortly after Josh Mascara became the new game director. So it seems pretty obvious to most players what's going on here. Jay Wilson destroyed our Diablo dreams and brought us this disappointing version of Diablo 3. And then we all sat around for months just waiting for them to make the changes and turn the game into the one we were hoping for on release. And then, out of nowhere, on a golden chariot from the heavens themselves, descends Josh Mascara. Josh Mascara comes down, and he changes everything, and he puts in all the things we want, and he makes Diablo 3 the game we want it to be. All hail Josh Mascara. But let me tell you why this idea makes no sense at all. Now, first of all, let me clear the air by saying I think that Josh Mascara is probably a great game director. I think Blizzard knows what they're doing when they hire people, and I think Josh Mascara seems to have a really good handle on what D3 needs at this point. But... Here's where I'm going to lose a few people. I also happen to think Jay Wilson was probably a good game director as well. Now, it's pretty easy to say Diablo 3 was disappointing, therefore Jay Wilson must be a horrible game director. Reaper of Souls looks awesome, therefore Josh Mascara must be an amazing game director. But I think you're missing a few important factors if you simplify it to that extent. First of all, the game director is just one member of the development team. Now, of course, being the lead of the development team, they're probably the most important member, but of course, it's not just the game director ordering around the pawns of lead developers, telling them what to do, making all the decisions. We've seen that lead developers get their own projects and have a lot of freedom to work on it. Travis Day kind of tackled itemization. Wyatt Chang has kind of tackled skills and abilities. And they have a lot of freedom to make decisions. We don't really know which decisions the game directors themselves are making or even approving. It's a big team effort and they're just one person on that team. Now let's look at why Diablo 3 was disappointing. They thought that Inferno would be good endgame. That if they just made it really challenging that we would spend a ton of time in Inferno and that would satisfy as endgame content, they were wrong. They thought the auction house would improve the game. It would just expedite trading and make it so people don't have to use third party sites. They were wrong. The auction house did a lot of damage to the game. They thought that the arena type brawling system that they showed at BlizzCon would be sufficient PvP, that it would be easy to balance and it would be a lot of fun. They were wrong. Now, all these things players were also excited about. Very little complaints about the Auction House or Inferno or the arena-based PvP from the players until the game came out. Personally, I think they should have done a full beta instead of just a beta to level 13. Maybe they would have caught some of these things before the game released, but of course they didn't. The game came out, and about a month later, people started realizing there were some real problems with the game. It wasn't as fun as they expected it to be, and some of those predictions turned out to be wrong. Now at this point, I think the dev team made a big PR mistake. In response to all the disappointment in Diablo 3, the development team defended the game. I think they even said, we stand behind Diablo 3 in the state that it's in right now. Now even at release, Diablo 3 has some excellent core gameplay. The foundation of the game is really unparalleled when compared to other games in the same genre. So it's understandable why they would be defensive on something they've been working on for seven years. But of course the players were complaining about design philosophy, things that are really important to enjoying the game. And what we wanted from the development was some sympathy. Some, okay, you guys are right. We screwed up here. This is what we need to fix. The game is kind of broken. We're going to work on it. But we didn't get that. Then come January, Jay Wilson steps down as game director. And even I assumed he must have been fired. He must be the reason the dev team isn't doing any of the changes the players want. They must have fired him. This must just be some ploy to make us think that he stepped down. But shortly after that, I was able to meet some of the developers at Blizzard headquarters. And around the same time, we started getting some interviews, a lot more communications through blue posts from the developers. And we found out that the developers have been sympathizing with us. They noticed the problems with the game. It's the same problems the players are concerned about. And they've been working on solutions to those problems. Maybe the biggest 
biggest thing the Diablo 3 dev team was guilty of in the first six months or so was a lack of communication with the players. And as we've seen from Jay Wilson's Twitter and Facebook posts such as F That Loser, public relations was not his forte. Shortly after that, we got some more confirmation that the devs are aware of the same issues the players were complaining about. March 5th, Travis Day announced the itemization patch. And a lot of players went, finally, finally the dev team gets it. But you have to keep in mind, when Blizzard's announcing something, it means they've been working on it for a while. We all know Blizzard moves very slowly. So it turns out that the Diablo 3 dev team understood the game more than we thought they did, and on March 28th, Jay Wilson was the first person on the dev team to admit that the auction house actually hurt the game. Now at that point he was officially off the dev team, but he was sticking around to help out with anything they needed. And then in June, one of Jay Wilson's old friends, someone he'd worked a lot with in previous video games and probably recommended for the position, Josh Mascara is announced as the new game director of Diablo 3. And shortly after that, we start getting some exciting announcements about Paragon 2.0 and Reaper of Souls. So obviously, in the two and a half months from when Josh Mascara became game director to when Reaper of Souls was announced, he must have come up with all this amazing content for the game while simultaneously promoting the console at a bunch of different conventions. Okay, so that doesn't make sense, but development on Reaper of Souls must have started after Jay Wilson stepped down, right? That gives six months to create what we have so far in Reaper of Souls, and Blizzard's known for working really quickly. Okay, so that doesn't make sense either, but the only other solution would be that Jay Wilson actually helped create Reaper of Souls. And that the same dev team that created Diablo 3 is the same dev team that's now fixing Diablo 3. But it's so much easier just to blame Jay Wilson for a bad game and to hail Josh Mascara for bringing in a good game. That way I don't have to admit I was wrong. Maybe, just maybe, the dev team isn't completely incompetent. Maybe the same exact dev team that brought us a disappointing version of D3 just made some bad predictions, messed up a bit, and has been fixing it. We know that Blizzard takes a long time to make changes. They really take their time and make sure things are perfect. So maybe that's what they've been doing. Maybe now the same dev team is bringing us these changes that we really wanted. And these big announcements we're getting right now are things they've been working on since earlier this year or last year or even sooner. But I want to hear your guys' opinion. Leave a comment below, let me know what you think, and you could be randomly chosen to win 50 million gold on EU or US. Last week's winner was Ujo the Joe. Congratulations, man. If you went on the channel, all you have to do is come on over to twitch.tv, let me know in chat or through a message that you won, and I'll have you prove it's you on Facebook. The link to my Twitch channel is linked in the description below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that subscribe button, and I'll have another one for you soon.